George Cambosis versus Devin Haney. And then I, I, I want to treat it as two separate topics because I want to get your thoughts on uh, the Tiafimo, uh, his reaction to the fight. They got him on camera reacting to his thoughts on Cambosa Haney. But first, let's just talk about the Cambosis Haney fight. So Lomachenko is, is in busy fighting the Russians right now. I think that they've offered him the opportunity to leave, but he's he's definitely not taking the fight in June against Cambosis. I think they're going to at least, for the at the very least, put it off for now. But Cam- Cambosa has, uh, Devin Haney has agreed to go to Melbourne, Australia, I believe in June to fight Cambosa. So I'll confirm the date in a minute. But George Cambosa, Devin Haney, I like this fight, Teddy. It's a good step, a huge step up for Devin Haney. And finally, we're going to see, like, does he have the goods at this next level? And Cambosa just seems like he couldn't be more confident. Um, how do you like this one? What are you looking for? Well, I talk about geography inside the ring being so important, you know, and it is where a guy uses his skill set to the best advantage. You know, if it's a box, he's on the outside. <laughs> you know, if it's a punch or if it's a, you know, a good body punch or, or a guy that likes to brawl a little bit, he gets the geography on the inside, gives him an advantage. Well, there's the geography outside the ring that you have to talk about sometimes. So it's a home game for Cambosis. So you, you have to figure that in. You have to figure that in. And then you got to look at the promoters. It's not just about where the fight is that gives an advantage to the judges or the scoring. It's who the promoters, who they want to win. Because they, the judges travel, by the way. I got news for you. Uh, <laughs> and, and if they're corrupt judges, that travels too. Uh, you know, if they're, <laughs> uh, if they're controlled judges, that travels too. So it depends on... Pretty sure they'll judge a fight on the moon for the right amount yeah, of money. Yeah, so it depends, you know, who the promoter wants to win, who the promoter has... Obviously, the the best chance to make money with has control over uh, to that extent. But it, it's going to be an interesting fight. It's the kind of fight that Haney it, it bodes fairly well for him in a way that he's a surgeon. He he's a marksman. He he's a sharpshooter. You know, there's no fat on his punches. But he does have a susceptible chin that he, before the yep. fight ends, it's not just the chin. He's got all the heart in the world he gets up. But it's not just that. It's that he gets hit clean before the fight ends. See, that mm-hmm. bothers me. Yep. Every fight, somewhere before it's all, he makes a mistake that's going to get him hit. And see, that's going to be the interesting X factor uh, here. I'm not saying Cambos is a huge puncher, but he put Teofimo Lopez on the floor. He showed that he can bang, you know, from that southpaw position when he has to. Uh, you know, and he could get your attention. And he's got, you know, just like Haney, he's got all the heart in the world. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got some extra going for him. He's got a lot of people going to be in that stadium uh, rooting for him, you know, over there in Australia. But for as far as the purity of the matchup, Haney... Haney's a Haney's gonna like it to the point where he's not in there with a a a, a TNT puncher and a, a physically overwhelming guy because Haney's not physically real strong. He's not the strongest guy in the world. I mean, he's strong enough, but he's the sharpshooter. He's the surgeon. He's the guy that takes you apart. He's the guy who has those laser punches, and that I think might bode a pretty well for him in the style matchup and styles do make fights in the style matchup here that if there's little holes little openings just little ones he'll be able to slice in there you know he'll be able to laser in there those shots and put himself in a position to win a decision uh that's what he's looking to do obviously composer wants to do that too uh i i think that haney haney has the matchup he uh, he wants uh, it should be a very interesting fight I love Cambosis too he's been on our show uh, it should be uh, you can't discount uh, him because of the improvement he'll probably get just from pulling off that upset the old timers would say when you win the title yep. you get 30% better so you you gotta look to see you gotta look to see how that factors in interesting fight Last one on the quick hitters. Uh, I know you had a chance to look at the impromptu interview they caught with uh, Tiafimo Lopez. They were interviewing Mark Kriegel, and Tio walked into the shot, and the guy who was interviewing Kriegel started asking, 
Tiafimo what his thoughts were on the fight and my god the conspiracy theorist in him just couldn't control himself and he started talking about the fix was in from the beginning that Camposis was always going to win if the fight went to a decision and that Devin Haney will win this fight that it's already predetermined the fix is in to get Devin Haney the um, the belts it was really off the reservation in terms of sour grapes I mean sometimes again a manager would step in and be like, dude, even if you think that, please don't say that. You're not going to win any fans. You're only going to alienate people. It's bad sportsmanship. Nevertheless, what'd you think? What'd you make of it? And what do you think? Well, if you take it serious, yeah. you know, I mean, listen, if you took it serious, that the good news for Haney is he could stop training now. You know what I mean? Go out, get yep. some ice cream. Yeah. You know, good point. Uh, like, I, I'm going to take my grandkids out for ice cream later. He could go do that because it's in the fix is in it's done hey look we're joking around you have to joke with certain things um listen i like Lo i like lopez i don't think people see him for uh the better part of what they could see him to be they see him for this stuff i think it's attached to his father his father has a great influence over him his father's done a great job getting him to the title can't take that away from him but there's also been some uh some kooky stuff, if you will, uh, with that, with his feelings and what he said about top rank and about, you know, all the stuff when he lost to Combos. And so uh, I, I think that's that's kind of in the air when you talk talking about Lopez with these kind of things. That's part of what you're going to get a little bit. Uh, again, I don't think people, I think the unfortunate side is they don't see Lopez for the better side of the smart kid that I I had a conversation with him that I kind of saw uh, the other side of him uh, and, and I like that side quite frankly a lot but the thing that I took out of it Again, I, I take all that with a grain of salt. Like I just said, I've been around this business too long. So you, you can't take uh, that stuff obviously seriously uh, in, that, in the way that we're, we're talking about. But what I did take seriously was what my eyes told me, not what my ears told me. I, I saw something on his right hand, whether it was a soft cast, whether it's bad. I didn't know he had a hurt hand. Maybe maybe I'm out of the loop a little bit here. Yeah, he just had surgery, something. I thought it, I thought they said it, one, one place I saw it said his elbow, another place said his hand, but he had some kind of surgery recently. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize it was his hand. I, I thought it was up higher. Um, but again, I, I'm not paying a lot of attention to it, but I am now. I saw the band stay. Obviously, he's had something on his hand. Uh, so obviously, whatever you're talking about with fights, uh, it, it's still going to take some time because I would think that uh, he's going to have to go through proper time of rehab uh, when when that whatever it is that's on that hand comes off, uh, whether it was a protective bandage or whatever, but it's still going to have to go through a certain amount of rehab. And, and then, of course, you got to go through a full training camp. Uh, and before you can go through that full training camp, you got to make sure that that hand uh, is up to par where it can do what it has to do. So, you know, I, I, I took more away from, from seeing that uh, and, and thinking about where that would put him on the calendar as far as being able to fight than I did about anything that, quite frankly, came out of his mouth. Yeah, it said he had it on his hand, and then, um, but he also had arthroscopic surgery on his left elbow in February. So now he's had elbow, elbow, See, that's and what, hand. That's what I had heard. I didn't, I didn't know about the hand. Yep. What, what did he have on the hand? Do we know? He's, it just says that he had arthroscopic surgery. Um, doesn't say what, but if it's arthroscopic... That, that's I a mean, shorter window of recovery. We understand yeah. that. That's good. That's the good news. 